What's up, everyone? It's been a while since we've talked about Husbando, so I think you know what time it is. Eight o'clock. Um, yeah, but that's- Summertime? Also, yes, but I'm talking about this video. Heck time! I gotta go! <sighs> It's time to talk about the most popular husbandos and best boys of the year so far. Just a heads up, this video will be focusing on the winter season simply due to how stacked it was. But we will review husbandos from the other seasons in future videos, so hit that subscribe button if that sounds like something you'd like to see. Anyways, without further ado, let's fawn over some beautiful 2D men. First up on our list is Izumi Miyamura. There you go. When it comes to Miyamura, the question is not do you like Miyamura, it's which Miyamura do you like best? You've got nerdy Miyamura with glasses, bad boy Miyamura with piercings, and arguably the most adorable version, Miyamura with the best anime boy haircut. In terms of his looks, Miyamura pulls you in with his deep blue eyes, style versatility, feminine features which help him look both pretty and handsome simultaneously, and most of all, those perfect lashes. He's got a likable personality too. At first, Miyamura comes across as shy and antisocial due to his history of being bullied and ostracized, but as he opens up to the people around him. We soon find that he's kind, loyal, and sticks up for his loved ones. I mean, he's still a bit timid and socially awkward, but I like that about him. Nothing wrong with being a little awkward. And I think another part of what makes Miyamura likable is his relatability, and this is really a nod to the story of Horimiya as a whole. Horimiya is a very realistic series with very realistic characters addressing a realistic portrayal of high school romance, which allows its audience to empathize with and relate to its characters to a higher degree. Wait, you had a high school romance? Stick to the script! All in all, Miyamura is someone you want to root for, so it's amazing to watch him overcome past traumas through the attainment of love from others and eventually from within himself. And we're happy to share a little more love by adding him to this list. So Longa, since you're relatively new to the Husbando world, we wanted to ask you a couple of questions to help decide whether or not you should be on this list. To start, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself? <laughs> Well, that's good enough for me. Yep. Say hello to our adorable baby blue snowboarder from Canada, Longa Hasegawa. As far as introductions go, Longa seems pretty stoic and aloof, but there's a lot more to his character once we get to know him better. Longa is calm and cool like falling snow, super innocent in the most adorable way, and quite contrastingly, he's also capable of displaying intensity and passion when it comes to his newfound love for skateboarding and recce. Hell yeah. And let's just talk about that for a second. As we suggested with Miyamura, relationships with others work to define who you are as a person, and Longa's relationship with Reki does just that. To summarize, Longa is unable to express his newfound love for skateboarding without Reki there to support him. So after they have a falling out, Longa loses that spark and needs to mend his relationship with Reki to regain it. And as much as I believe that your spark for life needs to persist during solitude, it's so much better when you're able to share that spark with someone else. And seeing Longa's expression of that throughout this series is more than enough to make us fall for his character. It's who I skate with that defines my feelings. And whether this relationship is simply friendship or possibly something more, Reki. It's extremely wholesome and keeps us invested in Longa as a character. Now we're going to talk about a couple best boys from one of our favorite animes of the year, ReZero. First up is Subaru, Outback, with its symmetrical full-time all-wheel drive, leather interior seats. Are you done? Sorry. Subaru may not fit the typical mold of an anime husbando. Subaru is flawed. He's a shut-in neat who hides behind his insecurities with eccentric behavior. He isn't regarded as super attractive, but he isn't unappealing by any means either. And before getting isekai, he struggled to make meaningful connections with others and could hardly find the will to get out of bed in the morning. But despite these personal flaws and daily turmoils, Subaru keeps moving forward and that's what's so commendable about him. When it comes to shonen anime, perseverance often stems from the ability to get back up and keep fighting in the face of immeasurable power and or merciless evil. And Subaru has persevered through these struggles, but at the same time, he fights a constant battle against self-loathing, depression, and other insecurities typical of a real-life context. And it's that context which makes Subaru so commendable to us. It shows us that whether it's facing a great evil or just finding the strength to get out of bed in the morning, we must persevere to find salvation. And that's a lesson we can all get behind. Overall, Subaru teaches us that through perseverance, a willingness to grow, and a touch of charisma, you too can kick life's butt. And maybe even a mass of harem filled with a half-elf, demon, and 400-year-old lolly, because there's nothing more motivating than that. But of course, none of this would be possible without the support of our loved ones. And Otto demonstrates that beautifully in this last season. I mean, this guy practically risked his life just so that Subaru could have some alone time to talk with his crush. That's a bro move right there. And it surprised me considering Otto's earlier interactions with Subaru and the White Whale. Well, on second thought, maybe we should talk about Garfield. He's pretty adorable. Whatever. That was a moment of desperation, and he didn't really have any connection to Subaru at the time anyways. However, if you're still finding it hard to forgive him, just look at this image of Baby Otto and tell him how much you hate him. Go ahead. Do it. I can't. That's what I thought. Okay, listen. I'm not a furry. But let's outline the very logical reasons as to why I, and maybe some of you, admire Lagoshi. 
First, wolves are my favorite animal, so of course I'm going to find Legoshi cool at the very least. Second, Legoshi is humble, polite, and docile despite his carnivorous nature, which stereotypically contrasts those characteristics. Therefore, Legoshi resists the cultural divide between herbivore and carnivore, which is very progressive and commendable, right? Third, Legoshi is the cool guy who doesn't know he's cool, or frankly doesn't really care to be cool, and I like that dynamic. And fourth, he just looks good. I can't explain it, but if you grew up watching Disney, I think they planted a furry bug in us, so it's not our fault. At least that's what I tell myself. Oh, and if you're hesitant to start Beastars altogether because of the whole anthropomorphic animals thing, I can assure you that its plot and characters are solid. Enough so that I can totally justify watching a wolf and bunny nearly get it on in bed without questioning my life choices. Anyways, why is Legoshi on this list? Well, he's my favorite animal, looks cool, has an admirable personality, and I really want to pet him because he's the goodest boy around. Yes, you are. Still not not a furry, by the way. Wait, what? Next up on the list is Bon. Honestly, we're not all caught up on Seven Deadly Sins, mainly because we lost some hype due to, well, you know. But despite any weaknesses the Seven Deadly Sins anime may have, we still think that this series has some strengths. And one of those strengths is Bon. Bon is six feet and 11 inches of passion, loyalty, masochism, and alcohol. His outfit screams flaunt what you got, and in combination with his pale blue hair, red eyes, and fang teeth, he exudes cool guy energy for lack of a better phrase. And first impressions alone suggest how likable and badass Bon is as a character. To summarize, he broke out of prison, got attacked by an apprentice holy knight, used her sword slashes to give himself a haircut, and then had an arm wrestling match with his old buddy Meliodas, which casually destroys the fortress he was residing in due to the sheer force exuded from the match. <sighs> I love anime. In fact, just knowing that Bon represents the sin of greed is more than enough for us to anticipate greatness considering other interpretations of greed in anime. And what keeps this trope fresh is the unique interpretation of each character's desires. Greed seeks friendship despite his outward desire for everything the world has to offer. A kitten desires knowledge and seemingly cares little for things that don't satisfy that hunger. In Bon, his greed is for life itself. Due to his troubled past, Bon assumed that if he lived long enough, something good was bound to happen, which motivated him to seek out the fountain of youth to achieve immortality. Each of these desires are justifiable, even if Bon's may be slightly misguided. Either way, so long as the path to satisfy one's greed doesn't harm others in the process or consume the one evoking the sin, I don't think it's inherently evil, but it surely has its drawbacks. And Bond has undoubtedly experienced these drawbacks, especially in his efforts to revive Elaine, but he's also demonstrated incredible acts of selflessness to atone for his mistakes. Now, I'm being intentionally cryptic here because my brother intends on watching Seven Deadly Sins, but when I found out that Bond went to, you know, to save Meliodas, I couldn't imagine anything more selfless than that. Props to you if you decoded the pictures, by the way. Anyways, Bond is compassionate, loyal, Loyal, loving, cool, and subverts the sin that labels him. Plus, he's a good cook, so obviously he's going to be on this list. Next up is Mr. Glow Up himself, Eren Jaeger. Through the power of puberty and the desire for freedom, Eren has single-handedly brought on the resurgence of the man bun, acquired the maximum number of abs achievable by the human body, and has acquired the seductive, deadpan, and emotionless demeanor attributed to many top-tier husbandos. I mean, just that one jacket scene alone from the trailer was enough to make Levi fangirls and fanboys question their loyalty. <laughs> Levi, no, be nice. There's enough love for the both of you. But how can you love someone who murdered innocent civilians and children and was responsible for the deaths of his- Wait, what was I saying? All jokes aside, Aaron has become a bit divisive in season four, but I'd say most fans are much more invested in his character than they were in earlier seasons due to this development. To illustrate, he's gone from an edgy, rage-filled teen striving to kill all titans to a ruthless usurper seeking freedom through genocidal means. Admittedly, we still haven't fully grasped Aaron's mentality or philosophy at this point, but we do realize that he doesn't have much choice but to keep moving forward. And honestly, it's that ambiguity that makes his actions so intriguing. All in all, whether it's Hobo Aaron or Chad Aaron, this usurper has undoubtedly conquered our hearts and we can't wait to see what he does next. Now it's time to talk about the man with the most optimal height and the captain of our hearts, Levi Ackerman. We covered a lot about why we love Levi in our Husbandal analysis video, so please check that out for a more in-depth discussion. But regardless of that experience, extensive review, there's always more to say about Levi, especially in season four. First off, with the promising new design of Eren, we were looking forward to Levi's map of makeover and we were not disappointed. In terms of differences, his features seem softer, especially his nose, but for the most part, he looked the same, with some stylistic differences, of course. Now, I think some people were slightly bothered by the changes, but that's okay. Change takes a bit of getting used to, and when it comes down to it, both designs are still very much Levi and therefore very much great. It's a synonym, trust me. Either way, Levi is far more than just good looks, and that's 
that's demonstrated heavily in season four. Levi's first introduction in this season reminds us that the walls were in fact built to keep Titan safe from him. For instance, while battling Marley forces, Levi was able to save Aaron, give Porco an epiphany, and further contribute to Zeke's PTSD. Beyond this, he got some degree of revenge in the coveted Levi vs. Beast Titan 1.5 and 2.0. But honestly, besides these battles and a couple of lighthearted scenes, we're finding it difficult to talk about Levi in a lighthearted tone. More than ever, Levi just seems broken this season. <laughs> Following Irwin's death, Levi just hasn't been the same. Remember how long it felt without Reiki? Yeah, this is that, but a thousand times worse. Levi also seems to lack control over many situations now that Aaron is pretty much calling the shots due to his insight and newfound power. And the hardships don't stop there. Namely, that one scene where Levi is surrounded by his comrades who had just been turned into Titans is absolutely heartbreaking. You can just see Levi suppressing his emotion in preparation to do what must be done. And being able to make it out of situations like this alive really helped me to understand the true burden of being human humanity's strongest soldier. And although ambiguous, I imagine both Levi and Zeke survived the explosion of the Thunder Spear, but with the way things are moving this season, I wonder if surviving will allow Levi to find any solace. At this point, I just want a spin-off where Levi gets isekai into our world and can start up a successful tea shop with five-star reviews for cleanliness, service, and taste. I just... Oh! Well, those are our thoughts on some of the most popular anime husbandos of 2021 so far. And those were just husbandos from the winter season. So we have plenty more husbandos to talk about in later seasons. I mean, Boku no Hero just aired, so you can imagine we'll be pulling at least a couple from there. Oh, and if we missed any of your favorites, let us know in the comments below. And as always, let us know why you love these husbandos too. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification for more husbando content in the near future. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.